I did it. I sold my 16 inch MacBook Pro for an eight gigabyte Mac mini. So to provide a little bit of context around this device, uh, I've been using this MacBook Pro for a little while now, about a year, I think, and it was a Core i9, 16 gigabytes of RAM, terabyte of storage. Um, you know, it was a decent Pro machine, except it couldn't really do Pro stuff. Like it seemed to really bog down in like basic After Effects things and uh, like Resolve with even basic color grades seemed to really slow it down. It wouldn't play back at, you know, normal speed or anything like that. And so, it just seemed to be just very slow. It ran very hot, of course, because of this whole thermal issue with these MacBook Pros. Uh, they still seem just to run incredibly hot. And so I was tired of it. I knew that these new chips were coming out. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to try to sell this thing. I listed it about a week before the event. It sold the day before. And that left me really hoping that whatever Apple came out with would be good enough to last me the next couple months to a year, whenever Apple releases their you know, Pro-focused Apple Silicon chips. So Apple's event rolls around, I watch it, and I am not very eh, impressed. I mean, these seem to be very low-end chips that are just replacing existing low product lines that aren't big redesigns of anything, really. It's just kind of like redesign the chip, but nothing else. And so I decided to hold off and not pre-order anything, which turned out to be my mistake because uh, all these YouTube videos start coming out of people stress testing these devices and putting them through their paces and you know doing 4K raw exports and all sorts of stuff, and these devices seemingly having no issue at all. And so I realized that I want one. So then I go and order the 16 gigabyte Mac mini with about, I think 512 gigabytes of storage and it's back ordered until like late December. So being impatient and also knowing that the holiday return window is much bigger, I decided to order and just go and pick up at my local Apple store, the eight gigabyte Mac mini. And I've been shocked over the past week of how well this device performs given its limited specs. So in this video, I wanted to kind of go over my experience with this device, kind of my workflow. And you know, if you've been interested uh, in the performance of this device specifically of the eight gigabyte, how well does that perform? Um, this is the video for you. So my professional workflow typically consists of using uh, Resolve and After Effects, Resolve for YouTube stuff, for um, client work, things like that, as well as After Effects for a lot of my client work. And so uh, I wanted to make sure that these two apps worked well enough to use for the next couple months on this hardware. And obviously this is the eight gigabyte one. And so, you know, if we look at this, we'll kind of know how it's gonna operate on the 16 gigabyte. Um, and so I started using this device over the past week and it has really, really surprised me. Resolve was very quickly updated for Apple Silicon and it runs fantastically well on Apple Silicon, on a gigabyte Apple Silicon, I might add. Uh, it seems to chew through my Pocket 4K footage, no problem. Even my X-T3 footage, which formerly on Intel, could not really handle the whole H.265 thing. This seems to play back no problem at all. For film school, I had a kind of a final short film project to do and I had actually shot it um, about a month ago and I decided to just real quick edit it in Resolve. This was all H.265 footage, 10 bit uh, from the X-T3 and it edited no problem at all. It edited much faster than it would have on my 16 inch MacBook Pro just because it's H.265 and that seemed to cripple my MacBook Pro but it seemed to have no problem at all on this eight gigabyte Mac mini. Exports were also very fast and actually surprisingly, I had thrown on some film convert grain and typically that slows the heck out of Resolve or the computer in general, particularly the 16 gigabyte Mac, or sorry, 16 inch MacBook Pro, but it played back no problem, like just in the editor uh, on the Mac mini. So that was surprising. Uh, export took a little while. I think it took around maybe uh, 10 ish minutes for this uh, one minute long project. So the export seemed to take a little bit longer. However, you know, the editing process was so smooth and so easy to do that like it was very, very surprising. So that was really cool to see. Now moving on to After Effects, for whatever reason on my MacBook Pro, it seemed to be kind of slow and janky. Uh, and oftentimes I would go to export through the Adobe Media Exporter thingamawatsit and it would oftentimes just n n hang up like halfway through and just not export. I haven't had the issue at all on the Mac Mini even though it's like using Rosetta and not actually optimized for Apple Silicon. Uh, it seems to play back things no problem on the Mac Mini. The only issue I've found is changing fonts on big long lists seems to kind of slow it down but you know, I feel like that's gonna be ironed out very quickly. And so overall, for my limited workflow of After Effects, cause it's mainly just text animation and like kind of basic vector stuff, seems to work just fine. 
Now I also use Figma, Notion, and Lightroom. Lightroom is a slow mess because Lightroom has always been a slow mess, but it doesn't seem slower than it was on my MacBook Pro. So that's pretty cool to see. Um, Figma definitely is very RAM intensive. And so it definitely seems to slow down even with basic projects. So if you're you know, big into editing Figma files and all of that, you might wanna look into the 16 gigabyte or maybe even an Intel Mac just because of the extra RAM that you're gonna need. Um, but you know, it is usable in, and I was able to make some Big Sur temporary icons because some icons are just too big for Big Sur. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, it's usable. It's just not the greatest experience. Uh, Notion works just fine on this thing. You know, it is a, a web-based thing. So I was a little concerned about how this might perform, but it seems to work just fine. And they actually today optimized it for Apple Silicon, which I don't really know how that what that means because it is an Electron app or something of that sort. But, you know, it is now optimized for uh, Apple Silicon. So that's great. And it seems to work just fine. All right, so now let's talk about the issues I've had with this device. Um, there aren't a lot, but the biggest one for sure is the Bluetooth issue. Uh, these devices seem to have had a consistent Bluetooth interference issue for the past seven years, I think. I think 2013 was when the Mac Mini was last redesigned and that's when it kind of showed up, is this interference with Bluetooth signals. Basically, every once in a while, things like the mouse will start skipping around and not really be you know, precisely controlled. Uh, also, headphone audio, if it's Bluetooth headphones, they'll start to skip and then also get super delayed by like two or three seconds. Um, and so it's definitely not ideal. And you know, there are ways to try to work around this. Um, I've heard that switching from HDMI to Thunderbolt seems to fix it sometimes, as well as using Ethernet over Wi-Fi. Um, but you know, it is definitely an issue, so if you're very much invested in like a Bluetooth ecosystem, you might wanna consider maybe the MacBook Pro 13 inch, that's Mac, uh, the Apple Silicon chips, just because this issue is definitely there and it is very annoying. I don't really use uh, Bluetooth headphones with the Mac Mini specifically because of this issue. The uh, mouse issue seems to kind of go away after like a couple of seconds or if you move the mouse further away from the device. And so I just kind of move my, uh, you know, my mouse hand a little bit further. Um, but yeah, the Bluetooth issue with the headphones is definitely there. And it's to the point where I can't really use Bluetooth headphones with the Mac Mini, which definitely sucks. My buddy Patrick Tommaso was able to kind of sort of work around this by switching to ethernet going over thunderbolt for the display as well as uh, trying to move the receiver far away from the actual device so that it's not um, having that issue of the lack of shielding around the bluetooth chip or whatever it is um, and so that might be a way to work around this however you know if you don't really want to jump through these hoops to try to make a mac mini work for you you might want to look into the macbook pro 13 inch if you want to go for an apple silicon device so obviously the Apple Silicon transition is still very much ongoing. So we're gonna have these weird hiccups periodically. Uh, one issue that I noticed, I think that was directly tied to Apple Silicon was the fact that Notion sometimes would open in this weird kind of blurrier low res mode. And so you just have to quit and restart it. Now that they optimized for Apple Silicon, it's probably not a big deal, but something to keep in mind, but it wasn't really that big of an issue. It didn't really stop me from doing anything. So overall, Apple Silicon, Mac mini, M1, very, very powerful device. Uh, this eight gigabyte one seems to be just fine for a lot of tasks, unless you're doing a lot of video heavy work that needs a lot of GPU stuff, because then you might want to get the 16 gigabyte one. But you know, if you don't really do that, you're just, you know, a writer, you're just uh, light photo editing, even like it can handle quite a lot. And so, you know, if you want to save a little bit of money, I would recommend the eight gigabyte, but if you can go 16, um, but overall, very surprising what this device can do. I think a lot of people would buy the more expensive like MacBook Pros and iMacs just because they needed decent performance. But now with Apple Silicon, I think it's gonna be much more easier to recommend lower end devices just because how amazing and how much more powerful they are now. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't like this video, hit that subscribe button and just really show me how much you hate me. But if you want to see more content like this, also hit the subscribe button. I'm probably going to do some more Apple Mac mini stuff, um, especially once the 16 gigabyte device shows up. Uh, I'm probably going to redesign my desk setup as well. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much for watching. I'll see y'all later.